Neck throughs, guitars, they're like a guy that you won't have a beer with you. I want to hear what's pushing the notes. Freddie King and B.B. King, Albert King, and let's not forget Burger King. I don't want to blow my knuckle out. Stainless steel is the work of the devil. These go to 11. From the East Amplification Tone Labs in Baltimore, Maryland, it's the Amps and Axes Show. With your hosts, Jeff the Godfather of Low Wattage Amps Bober and Mick Marcelino. Well, good day to you, Mr. Bober. Good day to you, Mr. Marcelino. It's uh, officially summer. It, until tomorrow. <laughs> until tomorrow. And, um, uh, you know. You know, day after that, chance of flurries. There you go. But, you know, 70 degrees today. <laughs> yoo Wow. Well, Unbelievable. Hey. Hey. Numbers? Yes. yes. Got to thank the listeners. Yes. Thank you, listeners. You guys have really kicked it up, and we need you to keep spreading the word to your friends. Tell them to download it. I, look, even if they don't like us, even if they don't even want to listen to us, just <laughs> grab their iPhone, grab their Google device, whatever it is, and just make it automatically download the show. This is a, this is called, uh, what, what do you call this? Extortion, right? <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, and just I love it. And then, you know, just to have them download it. That way we get the numbers. Numbers go up and we can add more shows and, and bring some fun That's stuff right. to you guys. It's, it's a strange form of extortion where there's no money exchanged. No money exchanged. You know? <laughs> just goodwill. We're extorting exactly. your goodwill. There you go. That's right. And if you uh, visit amps and access cast dot com, mm-hmm. you got all the social media. You got our Amazon banner. Click through that bad boy. Buy stuff. We get a kickback. They get drones. <laughs> and somehow live forever. I don't understand that, right, but that's right. what the guy's working on. You know, hey, you know, if you're into Easter, <laughs> buy your Easter candy. There you, know? you go. And it, make sure that if you go out to iTunes, though, that you give us the... One, two, three, four, five. Star ratings. Stars, right. And even if you don't like us, uh, <laughs> just give us five, right? And that way we can bring more stuff that you don't like. <laughs> You know, eventually you're going to like something. Uh, yeah. Eventually you're going to like something. I mean, if we throw enough crab at the wall, something's got to stick. That's right. Right? <laughs> so we hope it sticks on your wall. But let me tell you what wasn't crap. And mm. that was last week's guest, Mr. David Grissom. Oh, Dave Grissom. Yes. Uh, first off, uh, first Thank artist. You, Dave. For, absolutely. First artist to write us and say, I listened to the episode and thank you for having me on the show. Mm-hmm. Liked what I heard. It was very nice. It was. It was really nice. Thank you, Dave. Yeah. That was a very cool thing. Yeah. And uh, obviously his fans have uh, now come over. Yes. Uh, we've, I've gotten some of that. So welcome aboard. That's how it goes. Uh, uh, you got a lot of listening. Right. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. There's a lot there. <laughs> yes. Buckle up. You know, it's, uh, it's kind of crazy. I mean, we've had, hun- uh, you know, a hundred and so artists. Different artists. Oh, yeah. Way over. Yeah. 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 And now we have some manufacturers spray, sprinkled throughout, oh, you yeah, know. Yeah. Um, and we're going to have more of that yeah, coming up. Yeah. Another coming up soon. Yeah. One or two yeah. I talked to, yeah. yeah right. I talked to a future guest on the phone. Very interesting guy. I think it's going to be a good one. And, and I'll leave it at that. Tease okay. it. Yeah. I'm just teasing there it. There you go. There you Touching go. it. That's it. <laughs> it's like an open wound. <laughs> hey, speaking Ow. of o- open wounds, and I'm not even segueing, but speaking of open wounds. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. A good friend of ours, Angeline Saris. Yes. From Zepparella. Mm-hmm. She's the bassist. Bass player. Yes. Uh, she plays with Gretchen Men, who is, mm-hmm. you know, I talk to Gretchen all the time. She's everywhere. Yes. So I'm the present. Gretchen is actually doing a Deep Purple thing, and she just put up a video of her doing Highway Star solo, note for note. It's pretty damn <laughs> good. If you get a chance, go on Instagram, check out her Instagram. She put it out there. It's pretty tight. Cool. But uh, unfortunately, uh, Angeline had her favorite bass. Somebody, stolen somebody lifted her base her custom base it's a custom base right? it's it's a it's a flame yeah well it was a model that must not have been very you know like one year maybe okay, yeah you know okay. one of those jobs looks like a fender jazz but it doesn't have a pick guard okay it's got a flame maple top it's a lemon mm-hmm. color to it uh gold hardware you know it really gorgeous base and that was her number one and she took it everywhere yeah 
and uh, somebody lifted it at the show with the mono case. Right. So it was in the case, mm-hmm. and they lifted it. And uh, we're just putting it out there because I put it on our Facebook page. If anybody in that um, at area where they were playing out in California, is probably around San Francisco, I think. I don't remember. I can't remember the exact yeah. place. But if you have any, I you know, just go on her Facebook page. That's Angeline Saris, S A R I S. She has a whole write up. Has pictures of the base yeah, on there. Yeah, pictures there. And uh, you know when it, when it was taken, uh, where it was taken from. And, you know, uh, if you got any information, man, just turn it there, over. There was there was some identifiable um, one of the tuners. About, one of the tuners was chrome, s- chrome instead of gold. Yeah, yes, that's yeah. what it was. So three of the tuners are gold. One is chrome. Right. So that way, uh, you know, you can identify it kind of quickly. If you go into a pawn shop now, they they say they you know she they said all of them. she is going crazy with the pawn shops and guitar centers and all the music stores because you know when it usually happens like that it's usually a you know somebody who's uh, looking for a quick sale right oh yeah you know because it's not like ooh I've got this space because you know what are you gonna do you, right you can't gig out with it. You're going to be, yeah. You know. What are you going to do with it? I, you know, I'm, I'm sure they file police reports, yep. which go to the pawn shops, which also go to guitar centers. Yeah. Yeah. Because they have to, uh, it, you know, they have most of them have up. to hold things for 30 days before they can resell them. That's a whole new thing with them now. Yeah. yeah. You know, uh, it's other so reasons that we know about. It. Scum. <laughs> yeah. So if anybody has any information about that thing, uh, definitely get a hold of her. She's just right out on her Facebook. You, mm-hmm. yeah, believe me, she is diligently watching oh yeah I'm you sure. know I'm she sure. is uh not you know to lose your favorite one is yeah. uh, is a tough road so yeah. yeah just not not good and she uh she she gigs a lot so let's talk about our guest this week brother you know there's there's not a lot between his fingers and the notes that you're hearing <laughs> i was gonna say sans pick <laughs> <laughs> right it's fingers in one pickup yeah. most of the time yeah on man the guitar so uh yeah interesting cat man can't wait to talk to him so we're going to take a quick pause for the cause here and we're going to be back with a guest of the week uh mr jared james nichols hey this is david grissom you're listening to amps and axes okay and as promised we are back with our guest of the week mr jared james nichols jared how are you gentlemen i'm great i'm great glad to be on the show and it's great to have you and uh, to know that you use that term so loosely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I'm trying to be nice, man. I'm trying to be a good guy here, all right? Just awesome. <laughs> awesome. I, I, we won't stand in your way then. <laughs> so. Uh, so I got a story. Oh, okay. I always have a story. You always have a story. Okay. Uh, you know, I'm, uh, I'm cruising through the internet and uh, I see this little, you know, it's like a little mini documentary type thing. Okay. And, uh, you know, I see this guy on there and he's talking about playing guitar and I, and, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. It was your father that was there with you. Yeah. And, yeah. It was my pops. Yep. And, uh, and, and then, you know, they lead up to this whole thing. He doesn't use a pick and, and I'm like, okay. And then he starts playing. I'm like, holy crap. <laughs> so then I start searching, right? Cause mm-hmm. you know me in the internet, That's what man. you do. I go on YouTube and I start pumping up stuff and, uh, I'm like, yeah, we got to get this guy on the show. <laughs> yeah. And, <laughs> You're like, man, this guy is so bad that everyone needs to hear. How- no, I'm just kidding. Well, it's the, it's the, it's the good bad. Right. Yeah, exactly. It's the badass bad. Yeah. Uh, and then I'm, I'm following him on Instagram and I'm like, thank God he just puts out video after video and it's oh, just cool. him just it looks like you're strangling the guitar to death and yeah. the, and the, the notes that come out of it right and He's punishing it and of course one pickup mm-hmm. and, yep. and this and black Le- yeah this, this black les paul <laughs> that is just like screaming it's, it's, it's like awesome it's like stuff, three chords man. in the truth it's one pickup in the thumb <laughs> boom <laughs> that's it dude. one pickup in the thumb to rule the world that's right that's so right. through contact here we are that's right yes awesome yes yeah, absolutely man. Well, Jared, yeah. um, I'm gonna. We're gonna do what I uh, always do with our guests, and we're gonna have you take us on a journey. So we're gonna jump in the wayback machine here. Uh oh, here we and, go. And we're gonna find out where Mr. Jared James Nichols came from and what got you into uh, playing guitar. We're, we're into music to start with. So uh, give right us some on. history, man. Give us some history. Well, honestly, 
I always loved classic rock ever since I was a little kid. Like there was always music playing in the house. Like my parents, no one was a musician, but we always were like, you know, cranking up Bob Dylan or like my, my dad was a huge mountain fan and Hendrix and all this stuff. And, uh, so music was always with me, but originally when I was like 14 or 15, it was like right around the time where everyone was getting into sports or music and like trying to figure out what they were going to do. And I was really into like football and playing football, but uh, a lot of my friends were like playing guitar already and they were like, yeah, man, we're going to start a band. And I was like, great, I'll be the drummer because I always love drums. I didn't want anything to do with the guitar, man. Nothing. Uh, wh where was this? Where were you born and raised? <laughs> oh, this was in Wisconsin, serial, okay. uh, serial killer capital of the world, according to everyone else, <laughs> you know. <laughs> So good so, to know. Yeah, good to know. Check that off so, the list of moving yeah, there. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> yeah, don't even go. No, I'm just kidding. But yeah, so this is in Wisconsin. I grew up like in a farm town, man. So there wasn't much happening. Like Zeppelin was I feel like Zeppelin was still new. Like everyone in high school was like, Holy shit, Zeppelin. Like this is <sighs> this is awesome. And this is like ten years ago. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So I didn't they must have been watching touch Les guitar, Zeppelin. Man. Like it was like everybody was playing guitar, and it was like that, the running joke. You that, know? that is so backwards from most things that you hear or you think or you grew up with. It's like, oh yeah, man, everybody was doing sports, but yeah, I played guitar instead. You know, it's <laughs> like, here <laughs> everybody's playing guitar, and you decide you want to play sports. <laughs> yeah, and then I was like, you know what? I'll play drums. Drums look pretty good. And uh, it was all about like that, like physical thing where it was like mm -hmm. smashing the kit, right? And I remember I got a drum set. Somehow I conned my parents into getting me a drum set, and I swear to God, they hated it. They hated every second of it because you know I'd be practicing like in the basement, and it would be like, you know, once once like my dad came home from work or whatever, I was just like, stop playing, you know, it's just like killing everyone. So, anyways, they were like you know, you gotta, if you're going to be in the band, you guys can like rehearse in the basement or whatever. So my buddies came over with their guitars and they were trying to play like some black Sabbath. And like, I was so into it. Like I memorized the riffs, like in my head. And I was like, Hey man, I don't think you're playing that right. And they were like, what do you know? You're the drummer, blah, blah, blah. And I was <laughs> like, well, I, I know that that's not how it sounds. So I ended up, there was an, like an old acoustic guitar at my house. I started learning these riffs just to kind of show these kids how to play them and then wow. like one thing led to another and by the way when i was playing because i'm left-handed i flipped a righty upside down oh. and i played it like a lefty wow and then i started doing that and then all of a sudden i was like man guitar's kind of cool <laughs> like i started learning like some black sabbath riffs like the first riff i ever learned was electric funeral that wow. down, oh, nice. down, wah, nah, nah. <laughs> and i was like man this is sick right so i started getting into it and uh, my parents were like, yeah, you should definitely play guitar instead of drums because the drums are way too loud. So <laughs> they're like, we'll get you guitar lessons. So I had this like beat acoustic, like a Washburn acoustic. And uh, I did like four guitar lessons. And my, my dad said, if you can learn a song, we'll get you like a, a Squire electric. So I uh, learned a tune. I got the electric. But the teacher was like, man, if you don't play righty, like I can't really teach you. So I was like, so I had to, I flipped it over and I started playing righty. And originally when I first started playing, I played with my fingers, but then he's like, dude, you got to play with a pick. You're never going to be able to play like the stuff you wanted. You know, he's like, everybody plays with a pick. Mm -hmm. So I played with a pick and I did that for like eight years until like five years ago. That's when I stopped playing with a pick actually. Um, so <laughs> flash forward I was uh, like 15 years old and I was learning how to play, doing everything. And my buddy showed me who Stevie Ray Vaughan was and where I grew up was the same town where he had died at Alpine Valley. So it was like oh, wow. everyone like he was kind of like the local legend, right? Because everyone was like, oh, yeah, Stevie, Stevie. And they played him on the radio and and like they had like a remembrance concert and all this stuff. And, like, I remember I saw the uh, live at Elma Combo, and I was like, whoa. Like, the mm -hmm. bridge broke. I was like, that dude's putting it in. You know, like, he is getting hard on it. And, like, <laughs> I was able to see it. And that got me really excited. So I was like, man, I want to start trying to play some blues. And I had no idea what that was, you know. I knew, like, Sabbath. Like, like most guys, I knew Sabbath and, 
you know, like Cream, Hendrix, Zeppelin, that stuff. So, my well, mom. Some, goes, some of that is blues based for sure. Oh, totally. absolutely. It's, it's, totally. Yeah. It's a little masked at first if you don't know it. You yeah, know? yeah. But there's yes. a lot of blues behind that stuff. Oh, yeah, man. 100%. So, yeah. what, what ended up happening was they have these like Sunday blues jams everywhere. And it's funny because, like, I didn't know what they were, but in Wisconsin, <laughs> you can go to the bar with your parents if you're underage and drink. But I was going to go to the bar and play blues, you know. So my mom takes me like a month after I started playing guitar. We go into this bar and it's a f- dive, man. And she's like, we walk in, like I order like a Coca-Cola and she gets a beer. And she's like, hey, my son plays guitar. Can he come up and jam with you guys? And I was like, no, 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 please. No, no, no. You know, I was like, don't do this to me. And she's like, well, just try it. You know, you got to learn. And the guy's like, oh, yeah, can he play? She's like, oh, yeah, he's real good. And I was like, no, 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 you know, (laughs) just totally setting it up. And I remember I was like, I didn't bring my guitar. And the guy's like, oh, we got an old guitar, you know, back here you can play. And it was like a, you know, like an old Squire thing. But anyways, so I get up on stage and I do like uh, like a 12 bar shuffle with the band. And like they let me take a solo and stuff. And like at this point, I barely even knew what, you know, the pentatonic, you know, like the, the straight up, I barely knew, but I crawled my way through. And then afterwards, they're like, hey, man, if you ever want to come back and try again, you know, you know, like they were being really nice and encouraging. Mm-hmm. And then, dude, it just started. I started going there every week, every week. And by the time I was like 17, 18, I was like the ruler of the blues jam. Like <laughs> wow. I just put everything into that, nice. you know. And then, you know, that was that was where I kind of like cut my teeth. And luckily, I was close to like the Chicago area. So by the time I was 16 and I got my license, I would just go down there, play at Buddy Guys Club, you know, like the checkerboard lounge. And and it's funny when I look back at it, because I'm like, I had a lot of balls like to go to these places and be like, yo, can I play? Because now I think about it and I'm like, man, it probably wasn't like. Here comes this dumbass guy from Wisconsin, this kid, and he walks in like, hey, man, can I play? You know, now looking back, I'm like, damn, I'm surprised that really worked. But you know uh, what? That, you know, thank God we're young when we're young, you yeah, know, yeah, in, in, totally. in mind, because some of that shit would never get done. Oh, you know, no, you would totally. never no. do it. You know, the more the, the older you get and the more brain cells you have, and yeah. the more experience you have, you go, what was well, I thinking? Yeah, the further you get up in your head, right? Uh, the oh, courage totally. goes out the window. Yeah, right. You know. <laughs> yeah, man. So that was remember, that. And I was. Do you hooked. remember the name of the uh, the little dive bar? Do you remember the it name? It was called it? the Silver Moon. The Silver, Silver Moon. Moon. There you go. So and every that, Sunday, dude, famous. The place was like so shambly. Like it was cold. Obviously, it was snowy, and they just had like six space heaters. You know what I mean? Like they didn't even have. <laughs> oh jeez. Like it was like that, and you nice. know, at the time, I didn't even think twice about it. But now thinking back at like all this stuff, I'm like man you know but i'll tell you what it was the best thing for me you know because i was able to like just totally like learn blues and people were like hey you know who you know hubert sumlin is you know who muddy waters is lightning hop and i'm like no 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 and i just absorbed it and it was like totally in a pure way though it was you know no one had to shove it down my throat i was like i need to learn this because this is what i want to do you know sure Sure. Yeah. I mean, what a great opportunity, you know? Yeah, right totally. There well, for you. you know, totally. getting thrown in the deep end is uh, sometimes Baptism a good thing. Baptism by fire, baby. Yeah, man. Baptism by fire. Oh, hell yeah. And then <laughs> I do all this, and then I, by the time, let's flash forward, I was 18. My parents were like, are you going to go to college? What are you going to do? And I ended up applying for a scholarship to go to Berkeley in Boston because I was like, oh. well, I want to be a musician. I'm going to go, you know, I might as well go to music school. And uh-huh. I got a scholarship to go to Berkeley. So wow. I went there for six months and I hated it. And it was like, <laughs> it was like hell for me. Well, you know, I've, we've talked to a couple other people. Oh, sure. And, uh, one it, school or another, yeah. it is, you know, Berkeley is the place where it's like MIT. Mm-hmm. Right. So the, and, and, you know, I'm sure I'm going to get yelled at, but it, it's like the music side Mm-hmm. kind of goes away 
It's like <laughs> now now you're working with protractors and <laughs> and totally. uh, you no, know and, so and right. calculators, right? Because but it's theory, it, it's it's tons of that, yeah. You yeah. know, and totally. uh, and you see what gets churned out of there, right? Now, now yeah, you, you <laughs> meant you meant MIT, the engineering school, yes, not MIT Musicians Institute that, yes, of Technology. Um, yes, right. let's yes. get that straight. Yes, okay. Um, and you know, you see what gets churned out. It's 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 dream theater. Mm-hmm. It, it's Steve I. Mm-hmm. And now, yep. you know, these are not slouches, and they're great guitar players. Oh, absolutely. But there is this ginormous technical side to it. Well, sure. And, you know, Jared's a blues guy, right? Mm-hmm. He cut his totally. teeth playing the blues. And when you throw that mix in there, it's sort of like the guy that wears jeans to a for, funeral. For a, for a blues <laughs> guy, I think it just takes the Dude. soul out of it, you know? It just takes the soul out of it for a blues well, guy. Well, you know, and what's funny to me is like, and I get it, most guys, and I've seen people rip on each other about this endlessly, is like, oh, I don't need theory to do what I do because I'm a blues guy and it's all about the soul. And to me, it's like, no, no, it's all good. The theory's yeah. good. Yes. Everything's good. But it's like, the way it was presented to me was when I got there, they, I was like, yeah, I want to play blues. I want to like dip into rock, maybe like learn a little bit of jazz stuff because I was hip on like, you know, the, the jazz blues guys. And they were like, sure. no, 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 no. You're going to start with uh, basic keyboards and uh, classical guitar. And you're going to have that for one year. And then you're going to move into jazz theory, you know, and it was like. Right away, it was like the dream crusher came through. And it was like, <laughs> so you mean to tell me I'm going to sit here for a year and learn how to play basic keyboard? You know, like, and I get it. I don't want to hate on people that, you know, love the theory and stuff. But you sure. guys get it from coming from blues jams and, yeah. you know, just ripping guitar. And then to sit down on a keyboard or a classical guitar, it was like, no, I do not want to do this. You know, <laughs> what do you think? You think Pat Travers would <laughs> Exactly. Exactly, man. I mean, I, and not I, only that, I, I, I like the, everyone glu- was shitting on everything that I loved. I'd be like, oh. man, uh. even like stuff like, man, I love Hendrix. Like, you know, like eighteen year old kid, like, man, check out this solo on this band of gypsies thing, and like, I'd bring it to like a teacher to ask him to help me with something, and they're like, you can't be serious. Like, oh. you, like you cannot be serious. This is, you know. There's no so like, compositional is, theory to this. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's drug fueled, you know, blues. <laughs> really? And I'm just like, okay, well, that's what I'm into. So, <laughs> you know, yes, please. <laughs> but wow, yeah, man. so there was that. Yeah, now, I, I, I'm in total agreement with you about the theory thing too, because you know, the older I get and the more I play, the more I try to absorb, and the more yeah. I try to absorb, the mo- the better I can either uh, understand what's going sure. on or, mm-hmm. or try to 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 voice things better yeah. or or just put something out that's a cut above just a pentatonic kind of thing you know yeah, well, not that there's anything wrong with that look look at Steve Lucas but I you know I I love learning but that totally. kind of environment would would kind of crush me too yeah yes, Steve, Steve totally. Lukather you can take a guy like Steve Lukather who knows uh, there's nothing you can't throw Past that guy, yeah, yeah, and, and totally. he will he will do it correctly, but that guy has just he's just oozing soul, yeah, yeah, he's you got know, the feel. and and yep. that is something that it, you can't go and get taught, right, <laughs> right, definitely, <laughs> definitely, and you know, right. the big part for me was you know it's it I don't know if it's necessarily the theory or it was just the simple fact like you said with the MIT with where it was just. The music was out the door. Now it was just the the construction and the study is mm-hmm. where all of a sudden I went, but wait, there's some sort of mystery when you're playing and things that you find, right, as a player and you're like, that gets you excited. And I, I wasn't ready to just, you know, uh, be, be a player that just, you know, well, I play this note because I was told this note works here, you know, it, was, mm-hmm. yeah, it yeah, just yeah, doesn't, sure. doesn't go over for me. <laughs> No, I get it. I hey, get when it. I saw Buddy Guy hold a note for twelve bars, I was like, "Well, there's no law." <laughs> yeah, you're like, "Wait a minute, this no, is there is." It's the Buddy Guy law. <laughs> it's the Buddy Guy law. That's true. Yeah, exactly. That's right. Exactly. But you, you, you know that guy. Yeah. You know what do you so, say? Right? So you 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 parted ways with the uh, the technical end of of music. Yeah, and you point. know what? After this whole thing with with Berkeley and everything, and being told what I need to do and what I'm not going to do. That was when I started to kind of like, just kind of say, you know what? Screw it. You know, I kind of dropped the pick. 
I just started like playing like Hubert Sumlin, Albert King. Wow. Like I just, I was just like, you know what? I just don't even want to go that route. And then I started getting into like Les Paul Juniors and just like hmm. messing up guitars and like, you know, <laughs> like I was like, all I need is a bridge pickup anyways. That's, I can get all this, you know? And it wasn't yeah. like a, uh, uh, how do I say it? Like, I wasn't trying to be like a slacker or be like, no, I'm just going to do this. It was like, no, I just want to do whatever I want to do, you know? Mm -hmm. So it was like, once I left there, I came back to Wisconsin for like a year and I just kind of like woodshed. I was, I was like playing like 12 to like 15 hours a day, man. And it was like, I was just like going through this thing, you know, trying to figure out what, what I was and what I was going to do. And then I just remember like one day I kind of said to myself, well, I can't stick around here. And then I was like, I had the bright idea. I was like, let's go to L.A. <laughs> L.A. sounds good. You know, yeah. and my parents were like, yeah, you, you know, uh, are you sure you want to go to L.A.? You know, is that really something you think you should do? And I was like, why not? I was like, I was tw- I just turned 21. I could finally be places legally. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to L.A. Screw it. So, yeah, off I went with literally like a guitar and like 400 bucks. And I went to LA. Wow. Oh my God. You know, but honestly, you know, again, like this, you know, the older you get, the less you're inclined to do things and take chances and shit at that age. If not, then when, you know, yeah, Yeah, honestly, it was like the last, and I feel like it was like the last attempt because, you know, like everyone goes through shit and everyone tries to figure it out and things don't work. But I was like, you know what, this is my last, jump in trying to do something that's real before i have to sit down and you know and especially in wisconsin you know it's still like you marry a girl when you get out of high school and you have kids you know like Mm -hmm. i was just Mm -hmm. like you know what i'm going because if i don't do it now i'm probably never going to do it you know sure yeah Yeah, and uh yeah i headed to la and the first week i came to la there was a contest it was called i was like i was like hitting up everywhere right i was going to like the whiskey the viper all these places like all the jams trying to play and i remember like everyone was everyone was jerks right right away i noticed like the whole like the the vibe was super competitive and no one wanted you to you know and i I was i understood but i was like man this is going to be freaking tough man and then i was at guitar center in hollywood and there's like a billboard and I go out there and I'd look at, you know, what everyone was, you know, trying to get in a band or whatever. You know, I didn't even have thoughts of like having my own trio. I, I didn't even know what I was doing. So there was a thing and it said the Les Paul tribute contest. And it was a contest put on by Gibson, Dario Strings, like the Les Paul Foundation or like some some foundation. And uh, mm. it was like they were going to pick 10 guys and the 10 guys were going to get to be able to play to a backing track you know and uh and there was like the judges were like uh carl verheyen from super tramp michael melenda from guitar player jude gold from uh guitar player and like all these guys right and i just <laughs> thought so to funny. myself i was like what the <laughs> hell why don't i guests. just do something you know and so i made this like really really shitty like garage band recording and i emailed it over and I was like, well, let's see what happens. And like a week later, they were like, hey, man, you know, they, they emailed me. They're like, congratulations, you're in the contest or whatever. And <laughs> wow. I remember I went, dude, and I was like, I was like a shark. I was like ready to kill anything. I was like, <laughs> I am going to win. You know, like I'm usually not like super competitive like that, but I was like, I am going to win this. And uh, I remember I walked in and it was like like 10 dudes that were all like super shredders, like super good technical. And uh I remember we draw numbers and I got the last one. So I was the last one up and everyone went up there and like, was like, I was like, holy smokes. Right. (laughs) And then I went up there and I did like my, my thing and, uh, I won them over and I ended up winning the contest and I was like pretty jacked because I got like a brand new gold top, Les Paul. And like, I got a year supply of D'Addario strings and I was like, Oh man, like this is huge. Right. And one of the dudes that was, um, one of the other judges, he owned a studio in LA called Swing House. And after I played, he comes up to me and he goes, Hey man, when can I see your band play? Like, do you have a band? And I was like, honestly, I just moved here like two weeks ago. And he goes, <laughs> he goes, well, do you have some guys you play with? Like, what are you going to do? What are you doing? I was like, honestly, I'm looking for anything. And he goes, well, come see my studio, come check it out. And if you got some friends, you guys can come jam in a room. 
And I remember I was like, yeah, whatever, dude. And I end up looking up his studio online and seeing like, it's like a legit place. And I was like, whoa. So he, he brings me over there and he shows me the studio. And like the first dude I saw in there was like Marilyn Manson. And I was like, yeah, I'm not in Wisconsin anymore. You know? <laughs> and, sure. uh, and he's like, yeah, so we have like a full service, like backline production, rentals, all this stuff. And I was like, man, this is legit. And he goes, get some guys together if you want. Come in and jam, you know. I, I won't charge you or anything. Wow. And it, was, wow. it just started like that. And I found some guys, two Swedish guys. Uh, I was at Guitar Center again like the next day. And I found a guy. And I was like, hey, Moon. He was playing bass. I was like if I got some gigs, like, could I get your number? Maybe we could play. And it was like, so like nonchalant. And he goes, sure. And I called him a week later. Cause I ended up booking a gig and I was like, well, I got a place for us to rehearse. And he goes, Oh really? Cool. So he thought I was legit. Right. Yeah. And he's like, Oh, well he's got a rehearsal space. And I was like, well, we need a drummer. And he goes, Oh, I have a friend. He just came from Sweden. And I was like, well, bring him down. Maybe we can play together. And those are still the guys I play with today. And that was like five years ago. Were, wow. Now and they were the ones that were in that Winnebago studio that you did some songs, yes. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, the jam in the van. Jam in yeah, the van. That's it. They're like two Swedish buddies <laughs> from way back when. Like they've known each other forever. And uh, one looks... came out and the other came out. And uh, yeah, I hit I hit up like I said the bass player. And uh, you know I've been working with those guys for like four years. They're like they're like honestly the most dependable dudes i've ever met i'm like hey that, we got a tour coming up and they're like okay just give us a date we'll come you know so it's that great. is so wow. awesome that's crazy you know that is something that is kind of lost these days it's yeah, really you know, weird yeah, yeah. You, you know it, you got so many guys that have so much talent and they're like yeah well i'm doing uh dio disciples this week i'm doing this next week mm -hmm. and it's like mm -hmm. my god this guy has a, you know now he's working mm -hmm. the person's working all the time but when you get when you get that group of guys like like you have, mm -hmm. and then you can rehearse all the time, just that's, gels, that's yeah. a band that you don't want to open up for or you don't want to headline. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Because you're like, uh, we're getting our ass kicked by these three guys. <laughs> and <laughs> Well, I'll tell you, you what, know? <laughs> man. I'll tell you what. You're so right because, I mean, we've been on the road now. And the funny part was, like, we just jammed for, like, a, a solid year. But then we started getting on the road, and literally everybody from Skinnerd to Zach Wilde and, and Black Label and mm -hmm. Glenn Hughes and Doug Aldrich and all mm -hmm. these guys, every single person after like a sound check or they watch our set, they're like, Oh, uh, what the fuck? You know, <laughs> it's like, and it's not because we're, you know, and I would say that forever. I'm, it's not because of the technique or it's, it's just because like you said, three guys playing yeah. all the time, you know, you sleeping, gotta get good, man. sleeping on each other's <laughs> floors and you know, it's, yep. it, it's that thing you know mm -hmm. yeah you can't beat that yeah you know, it's, because it's great you know once once you take it out of the rehearsal studio and on the road that's where it even gets tighter yeah yeah because you then know. you start you, you yeah. gotta hear each other they're spaced apart and it starts yep. to get even crazier yeah man and that was oh, the funny yeah. part is like everything got real when uh it was in 2014 like at the beginning of the year i was like all right now it's time i gotta figure out how to get on the road gotta figure all this out and we worked with an agency like we got in touch with a guy in Belgium and he was like a, uh, like a small club, uh, tour booker. And, uh, he goes, yeah, I'll book you a tour. Like we sent him some stuff and we were like, holy shit, he's going to book us a tour. <laughs> Dude, he booked us like 74 days in a row. Oh my all God. Over oh. Europe. We did like a month oh in Spain God. alone. And like, we're not talking like half hour, 45 or an hour minute set, you know? Yeah. Like yeah. we were drinking whiskey Playing for two and a half hours at these little clubs yep. every night all yep. over Europe. And it that just like sweet. made everything that much more, you know, that yeah. much more real. So it's, that is you know, it's solid, crazy. Man. Now, uh, wow. Because the style that you have, we're, we can probably bet the house that there's no uh, modeling going on when you record and stuff, right? You're running through a real amp. Oh, yeah. Pushing oh, the yeah, air yeah, to yeah. a mic. So when no, you do. Definitely. When you do these gigs, you you rely on them to provide the back line, I'm sure, right? Yeah, you know what? When we what was cool is I got hooked up. There's a the uh, amp company Blackstar. They yes. like got in touch with me really early on about just using backline, right? But nice. honestly, wherever we go, it's always I'm provided. Yeah, it's the backline. I'm, I'm at the mercy of the backline, and uh, I've done some crazy shit to get tones. You know what I mean? 
you know <laughs> like yeah. the funniest part is like when you do these festivals or whatever and they have a, a just like a standard blackface twin reverb right mm-hmm. and like i'm not the like I'm not the guy like I get it like when we're in the studio and stuff like if we're doing demos or something like I I recently like tried like a Kemper and that was cool and but I'm not the guy that goes and he knows everything about axe effects or modeling and everything so if I'll get stuck with a twin reverb on 10 you know what I mean like that's (laughs) that's more along my lines it's like well I need more distortion I'm just gonna push it you know what I mean and so, then your fillings fall out. <laughs> oh, you're killing people! Literally, people are walking out with their ears bleeding. You know? Yeah. So you don't you don't have like a, a fly rig that you take with you with, with, with like regards to like a board. small pedal board kind of thing <laughs> where you can plug into any back well, line because your sound is at your feet. Well, what's cool now is I've gotten to the point now where uh, like the guys in Black Star like. They'll send me with like what I use now is like a 30 watt combo, right? Mm-hmm. I saw uh, you demo that combo. Very cool, yeah. demo, by the way. And I'll just I'll just crank that, and I basically get my tone. But I've always been like, and it's not because I'm trying to be cool or hipster or whatever. But I've always believed like the more I get out of an amp before a pedal, that's that's where I'm at. Even if like I'm running through something weird, like you know, like a, at a festival, like I'm running through like a Marshall, like a jcm 800 or something i'm just like just plug me into that and let me just go for it you know but now wow. lately since i toured with zach zach wild hooked me up with a bunch <laughs> of his gear right so like uh-huh. when we toured with him like i made like a little pedal board but like everything fell apart in the first week you know <laughs> like i was going so crazy like i broke the jack in the in the <laughs> distortion and uh you know everything was all jacked up and he was like here man let me hook you up so i started running through his rig and running through his pedal board and stuff, and I was, and it was like a totally different thing, you know. Oh, wow. Jesus, that's got to yeah. be night and day. Wow. So yeah, you go he, from he... a thirty watt uh, t- little tube amp to uh, all these JCMs and you know a chorus Univox, EVs. you know everything. Yeah, the EV speakers. Oh. All his cabinets have his own yeah. signature EV. Yeah. Yeah. They're all hundred goes, hey, watts. Man, use my guitars, and he's got EMGs, and I've yeah. never even played one. <laughs> and all of a sudden, I plug in one of those, and I'm like, Jesus, this thing is, like, ready to tear someone's head off, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so You go from a P90 to an, e- to an EMG. At a wall I'm of telling you, man, you can't make this shit up, you know? Well, I've seen, I've seen your videos with his guitars, and it looks like you've modified the pickups and, and the yeah, guitars. Yeah, you know, yeah. Zach was cool. He gave me, like, his stuff, like, there's no doubt it's awesome, and, and it's Zach, you know? And like, oh, sure. I was always a fan of him on the customs. You know, I was like, oh, man, yeah. you know, that's that's great. And he hooked me up, but I couldn't, I can't do the EMG thing, man. I can't do it. Yeah. It's too much for me. So what I you did know. is I got one pickup I got that I put in like his wild audio is from uh-huh. Seymour Duncan. I was up there and I was, this is a super short story. Uh, you can cut me off if you need to, but that's I funny. was up there and uh, MJ, one of the winders in the custom shop was asking me like what I like about pickups. And I was like, I don't know. I was like, I like P90s. And uh, she's like, yeah, that's cool. You know, and I was like, but I got these guitars now and they have a bunch of EMGs. I said, but I like humbuckers, but it's like I can't do the EMGs because like when I roll down my volume, like I lose all my all that everything I love when it's off 10, you know, because when it's Mm -hmm. on 10, sure, it's just firing away. But like you don't get any of the nuance. You don't get any of that stuff. And she's like, here, try this pickup. And she pulls out an old, like, like an old humbucker. And I was like, what is it? And she goes, this is one of the uh, humbuckers that we made with Eddie Van Halen back in like 1981 or something. You're kidding. And it was wow. old and it was in a bag. And I was like, cool. And she's showing it to me. And I was like, yeah, this thing's like, it was you, you know. And I was Man. like, yeah, like this is awesome. And. <laughs> I had no idea, but she was giving it to me and wow. she gave it to me. And that's now the one that I've been using lately that I really like. It's like a super hot PAF. It's like, it's what they that's modeled the, the uh, Frankenstein pickups after. That's so nice. cool. That's the best. I mean, I, so it's I love cool, PAFs, you know? and, but you know, the PAFs are kind of like a hot single coil, yeah. but mm-hmm. a hot PAF. It's like, it's just before humbucker, but mm-hmm. you know, you still get all the nuances and the air, 
and it cut it cuts some it. of the mud out of them that that yes. can occur yeah, with absolutely. them you know absolutely especially on the short scale guitars in the neck position but it mm-hmm. doesn't matter to Jared because right. he rips them out anyhow right yeah, yeah I, I, neck pickup dude yeah. everyone hates me for that by the way it's funny people are like please just put something in the control nah. cavity or you know in the neck pickup cavity because it just looks bad man. Oh, like, what, did anybody ever tell that to Eddie? Yeah. <laughs> or, yeah, right. Seriously. It's yeah. like, yeah. whatever. You, whatever. You know, um, when we, we, we interviewed Leslie West, Yeah. and uh, Jeff has had a relationship, you know, he's known Leslie for a long time. Dude, he's like and, my biggest dude. Yeah, he's like the biggest guy now. And he said, oh, look, I played these juniors forever, and that tone knob yeah. can become your neck pickup. Absolutely. Yeah, roll totally. the thing back. And, 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 you, and that's what I... I in that um you get the woman jam, jam in the van thing i yeah. actually watched jared his hand was all over did you see work that? the tone control yeah. i went okay p you know like he mentioned junior single paf volume and tone yep mm-hmm. it's, it's leslie now it's what leslie I, what i'll do is uh and i'm sure it's okay i will link that youtube video oh, with course, man, with the course. episode so cool. the guys can go to our site and actually see because they they do you know they have multiple cameras yeah, 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 you know, and mm-hmm. they and they're they're focusing a lot on your face, and then they go down. But there's there's a bunch of times, and I think it's on crazy or mm-hmm. or or baby. But anyway, when you 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 can see your hand, mm-hmm. and and yeah. he's rolling those knobs oh, like crazy, man. And, volume and tone, yeah, yeah. yeah so and that's, that's very cool. Yeah, man. And like I've heard a lot of people talk about it, but like for me, like I would rather do the Leslie where I back off the tone to get that neck pickup tone because it's more unique first off mm-hmm. and it's yeah. funny like a lot of guys you know they really don't get that you have so much tone that's already on the guitar just in those two knobs you know especially with the p90 man you can get sure. everything and yep. you're not getting all that magnetic pull on the strings right exactly right. which means it's going to ring longer right Absolutely. exactly and, and yeah. it's it's just a different beast and like you know yeah. that's that's what i love about it too and it, and it forces you to create more tones and for you to do stuff you wouldn't normally do if you were on a, you know, a five way position strat or regular Les Paul, you know, it's just a lot more to the guitar that you have to actually create. It makes you work, man, but that's okay. Yeah. It makes you work, man. Now, now the, the one question I have, the black Les Paul, that's obvious. That's obviously a custom shop. Yeah, how, yeah, I got did, stories about that guitar. How did you <laughs> obtain that thing? I mean, how did that all come about? Did you just so go is, there and This is how that came about. So, remember the studio I was talking about before where I met the guy who's now my manager, Phil. He had Aerosmith in there doing their last record. And yeah. um I would be in the rooms rehearsing and jamming, right? And all of a sudden like Steven Tyler would walk in and you know, like, or I met fuck Joe Perry, and they're like, who the fuck are you? And I'm like, uh, no one. <laughs> you know, like, I'm nobody. I'm just a guy with a guitar, you know. And uh, eventually they invited me back to hang out with them and Jack Douglas um, and watch them record. And they're like, yeah, just hang out, you know. And they were like, what do you think of this mix or what do you think of this? And I'm just like, you know, like – Way out of my league, way out of my element. <laughs> so there was a guy who was hanging out. His name was Rick Dufay. I don't know if you guys know that name. Rick but Dufay. he played in Aerosmith like when Joe and Brad left in the early 80s. Oh. So he was hanging out. And Rick's like kind of – he's a character, man. Like he's like – he had – so this is a story. I met Rick and we started hanging out. But Rick had a 19 – I want to say a 68, less Paul custom – that he used back in the Aerosmith days that he had ripped the neck pickup out of. And all, and all that was in there was a volume knob, uh, like a, a double cream PAF. And that was it. That was all mm. that was in there. And the guitar was absolutely thrashed, man. And I, <laughs> and he had it at his house and I was like, what is this? Like, what is this one? And he's like, Oh, that's, you know, it's a, this guitar. He told me the story about it. And he's like, yeah, he's like, and it was just so funny. And it radiated with me. He's like, you know, you play blues and rock, man. He's like, you just use the fucking bridge pickup anyways. And like, <laughs> especially when you're playing rock and arenas, he's like, you just need a volume knob and a bridge pickup. And he's like, doesn't matter what else you do. That's all you need, you know? So he said, this is what I used when I was playing in Aerosmith. And I was like, man, that's sick, right? So he brought it to the studio and then Joe Perry saw it. And he was like, man, I really like this. And Joe had a shoot with, I think it was like Guitar Aficionado or some magazine. And you can see... There's pictures of Joe with this guitar. He took it to use it on the photo shoot. 
Wow. And um, that is so cool. Eventually, he they were playing American Idol, and Joe was like, "Oh, he went to Gibson, and he's like, hey, can you make me one of these?'" And they made him one with the Floyd Rose, or like with a like a Wilkinson trim oh. and a, mm-hmm. a humbucker. So he has that now, and he's been using that. But I remember I fell in love with that guitar, and I was like, "Man, I'm never gonna be able. I'm just gonna have to like." rip out the neck pickup out of a custom and try and make it like this right yeah and um flash forward i saw that the music zoo did like a run of single pickup les pauls in like 2010 and that was right around the time that i was hanging out with these guys and i just remember i saw the price on them and i was like yeah there's no way like i I actually laughed i was like like six grand right yeah (laughs) <laughs> like, how the hell do you expect a regular, you know? Yeah. It's like, yeah. You, yeah. you guys are smoking crack over there. You know? <laughs> like, there's no way. So I was like, I might as well just get, like, a cheap Les Paul Jr. or something. And what I ended up doing was I got, like, a faded Les Paul Jr. And I just beat the hell out of that for a while. And, nice. it, and it had a, a humbucker in it. And I was like, oh. I was just playing that. And then I remember I was like, you know what? In the back of my head, I was always like, I'm just going to keep my eye out just in case maybe someday I'll run across something, you know? Sure. Huh? And uh, then we were on tour. We were in like Utah. We had just played with, it was like the first time I met the guys in Skinner. And uh, we were playing there and I used to go on, it was like when Reverb.com first started. And I was like going on there and I just type in Les Paul single pickup and like nothing would ever come up. <laughs> and then one day out of the blue, like I saw a thumbnail for it. Like, cause I used to like get crazy. I'd go on like Google and do an image search of like the last <laughs> week, you know, like yeah. if anything came up, I was going to find it. You know, I, I was going to mm-hmm. find that guitar and there was like a thumbnail came up and it was this guitar and I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And it's, and there was a reverb link and it yeah, literally said why? in the description, bought this guitar new, uh, expecting it to feel and sound like a Les Paul Jr. He's, and it said, it doesn't, uh, neck is too big. It, it doesn't sound any of the way I wanted to. I just want to get rid of it. And I contacted the guy and I ended up getting the guitar. I put on a credit card and I got the guitar for two grand. Out wow. The Jesus. And, wow. It, and he, he custom crap. ordered it. Holy crap. Wow. And, that and, is amazing. Yeah. And <laughs> you then, were meant to have that guitar, man. <laughs> oh, dude, I was all over it. Like, I had to like apply for a credit. Like that's, you know, that was the, the length. I was like, I need to get like a credit. I was like, what do I do? Well, get a credit card. All right, let's do it. And, um, it was funny because the dude shipped it over and I was like, I saw it and I was like, man, this is, this guitar is fucking it, man. Like, this is awesome. And originally when I got it, what a lot of people don't know is it had a, uh, it had a, a soap bar P90 and it had, a um, you know, like, a. uh, it didn't have the wraparound. It just had like the standard tunematic bridge yes. and, um, mm-hmm. it had on different tuners, you know, everything was different. So since I love Leslie and I love that thing, I was like, fuck that. I'm putting a dog ear on it. Uh, so I put a dog ear in it and then I put Grover <laughs> tuners on it. Cause I was like, I don't know. I just was never a fan of the, the standard one. So, I, you know, I was mm-hmm. just beating it up and like it was yeah. taking on a life of its own. And then we were in Europe and I got this great idea this is a horrible idea to make it a wraparound. I was like, I just want to make it a wraparound, man. I was like, you know, then it's even closer to the junior. I was like, I bet it'll sound cooler too, blah, blah, blah. And you know what? Was it the best idea? Probably not. But I remember when I first did it, I just used, we drilled the holes and I just used like the, um, the tailpiece. Like I didn't even get like a proper one or anything. And I like finished a tour on it. And, uh, then I ended up coming back and getting like a real wraparound and a stuff. But I mean, uncompensated yeah. tailpiece. Oh yeah, wow. Yeah. The, <laughs> the guitar is it's its own thing now. You know what I mean? And and yeah. the best part is like everyone who plays it and everyone that sees it, like I mean, everybody's played it from Joe to Zach to you know, like all these great guitar players, and everyone's like man, this guitar is cool. You know, like it has its own vibe because when you play it, you play it differently, you know, and it's one of those things. And now it's just, it's got miles on it. We've probably done, probably done like 600 shows on that guitar. And I remember funny, funny story is I went to Nam this last year and, um, I was up at the Gibson, like the Gibson room Mm -hmm. and, uh, the guys at the custom shop were like, Oh yeah, yeah. Can we see it? Cause I had it in the case. 
And I showed it to them and they were like, what did you do to it? <laughs> they, were like, they were looking at it like I like abused a child. They were like, what did you do? Like, why would you do this? And I was like, I don't know. I was like, it just morphed into that, you know? And they were like, whoa, like, you know, and the one guy's like, oh, it looks like, did you re-neck it? And I was like, no, I just actually, there was one time I kind of fucking, I hit it against the thing and then, the, the, you know, and they were just like, oh my God. I was like, dude, that thing's lived, you know, that thing's been around now. Wow. And uh, it's funny too, that guitar, <laughs> I've had offers to sell it already and Ricky really? Medlock from Skinnerd wanted to buy it. And I just, I I wouldn't sell it. So he ended up going to Gibson and having them make one like it. And then (laughs) he goes, it doesn't sound like yours, you know? (laughs) So it's got a compensated bridge on it now. Mick just pulled up a picture. Yeah, yeah. And I guess the custom, what does that say, custom shop? That sticker? The plate? Yeah. The yeah, little plate? It, oh, custom yeah. made. So I got that because of the old 335. 335. Because, you know, yeah. when they would yeah. they would make yeah. it into a Bigsby, they'd put that plate over. Where the where the bridge used to be. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. so That's the holes are still did. there. Yeah. Right. It's yeah. just it's covered up now. That's yeah, awesome. Man, that That's Things funny. beat to hell. And I mean, oh, I beautiful. always mod it. And the thing is, like, people are like, oh, don't change it. Don't do anything. And honestly, I just keep doing different stuff to it because I don't, you know, I just trying to always make it you know like tone pros guy came and he's like hey can i give you a bridge so i put that bridge that's on it now and you know we're trying that out and you know mm-hmm. it just yeah. is what it is yeah and that's I, what you do you just try to make it better for you that's all i mean because that's all that matters exactly that's totally. all you that get, matters you, totally. you know it's the it's the hammer that you got to use every day absolutely so that's you may right. as well make it comfortable yeah that's right yeah, <laughs> yeah a so, lot of people um, are like I, are you gonna retire that guitar and i'm like retire it like <laughs> What do you? Why? It's, it's not just like break it in. You know. <laughs> yeah, I saw Steve so. Morse the other day when he's already on his tenth set of frets on that original Music Man. Oh my God, that's unreal. So, uh, retire? I don't yeah, know. Wow. No, 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 no. What, what is a retire? It, it, at any point, was there a new fretboard involved? How do you put ten sets wow. of frets ten, in a ten, fretboard? Ten sets. Holy Jesus! I'm sure there was a lot of filler going in those oh, slots yeah, yeah. at <laughs> number Man, five. That's insane. <laughs> you don't even need tangs anymore; just crazy glue. That's <laughs> Seriously, that's an insane. Wow. So, um, are you still using a, a like a thirty watt? What was it? A combo Black, of Black Star Black or something? Star, yes. You know what? I've been using those, but now those guys over at Black Star, they're trying to get me on. They made it's like a brand new thing. They made it's basically they have these amps called the Artisans. And they're just hand wired, kind of, mm-hmm. yeah. uh, you know, Marshally style. And they made one that's like a super high gain. Because I always tell people, like I told, I tell everyone, and I'm not biased. I'm just like, just make it sound like the, you know, the angriest, you know, like Leslie West, 1970. And there then I can go. do everything else with my volume and tone. You know, <laughs> if I can get that amount of hit out of it, and then I can, you know. But anyways, so they made me this high gain thing. And uh, I'm going to get it before this next tour, and we're going to try mm-hmm. and see how that goes. But then I'll be back on, like, a 412. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. okay. So we'll yeah. see. We'll see how it goes, you know. But that's the one thing that, you know, I'm always changing. Or, like, I'm always, you know, tinkering with stuff and trying new stuff, you know. And you go single as, as channel. You, you don't do channel switching or anything No, like no. That. I, I'm straight up. And that's the thing. Like, no matter what I plug mm-hmm. into a champ or a 100-watt thing, you know, I always yeah. – Put put it where as far as it can go before it just sounds horrible, and then I just use the guitar, you know. <laughs> yeah, I and love that's that. that's where you know you back off to you know six yeah. or seven or eight on the volume, and then when you mm-hmm. hammer it, right, right, yeah. you, you know you can you can go to eight, yeah, eight and a half, nine, and yeah. really totally. get what you want out of it with still a little bit of air, and then sometimes you just need it to sound horrible, and you go to ten, yeah. you know, and then, totally, you know, man, and, and you I got that guys. Really. You know, they forget about that sometimes, and people are way too caught up, especially, like, with, like, I, I know I'm not one of those guys, but, like, with pedal boards, and, like, I need this gain, and I need this, and it's like, yeah, but, or you could just, like, go savage and just, you know, be a player and just, yeah. you know. Like Angus just, Young grind, man. Just, I, just I, think, I think there's a new bumper sticker there. Go savage. <laughs> go savage. Go savage. I Macho like that, man. man. That's it. Yeah, man. <laughs> that is beautiful. Yeah, yeah, Macho great. Man, he was from Maryland. Oh, was he? Yeah, there man. He, yeah, he lived in Laurel. Wow. <laughs> there you go. Wow. R.I.P. Macho Man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Him and Elizabeth. Hey, one question. You, uh-huh. we, we interviewed, uh, I think he gave you some lessons, maybe, uh, Greg Kalk? Yeah, I know Greg. I know Greg from way back. Oh, man. You talk about a monster. Ooh. Yes. And you that know what's cat. funny? 
<laughs> I tell him every time I see him, dude, I've stole so much stuff from Greg, you know, <laughs> so Good. much stuff. Greg is so insane. It's unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah. He's like the wolf in sheep's clothing. Oh, man. You know? Yeah. It's funny. When I started playing guitar, Greg lived about, I would say, 40 minutes away from me. And he had a son that's like a few years younger than me, and he plays mm -hmm. drums. Yeah. So, you know, it's a small world, right? So I started playing, and I used to go watch Greg play. And obviously, you know, he's always been an alien. He's always been insane. <laughs> and I ended up, like, talking to him. And he's like, you know, I got a son that plays. And then I remember, like, the biggest day of my life back then was – He's like, well, why don't you come over to my house, to Greg's house, and you guys can jam in, my, in the basement. I have my guitars, and I have all my stuff there, and Dylan's got his drum set. And I remember when I went there, I was so nervous because, like, I was, like, a super, super fan of Greg. And he had, like, his, like, shell, you know, like, his, like, uh, his blue telly and Strat, like, his oh, older yeah. stuff. And I was like, oh, my God, you know. <laughs> but Greg was awesome. Like, I would always, like, ask him questions, and, like, you know, I'd be like, hey, how do you do this little thing? Or, like. Once in a while, I'd, I would be playing something, and he would walk down yeah. and take the guitar and be like, no, 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 don't play like that, play like this. And then he'd just walk back <laughs> up. You know? Like, he was checking it out, and I was always like, oh, my God, you know? But, yeah, yeah. Greg, he's, yeah, he's insane. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, you know, we, we had him on, and we were talking to him, and then I asked him, and he said, oh, yeah, you got to check this guy out. Yeah. Oh, that's meaning, awesome. Meaning you. Yeah. yeah. Meaning you, yeah. brother. And uh, he, he's a big fan. Yeah, that's yeah. Greg is. Yeah. And it's funny. I saw him like every time. And now it's funny. I only see him at like Nam or like I'll see him at these little things and uh, I'll be like, you know, it's like we, we don't skip a beat because he's just he's a real deal guy, you know? Oh, and yeah. He's probably one of the best guitar players on the earth. It's no doubt. You know, he he just it's like you see him and you go, OK, I, I've seen it all. And then you see him again, and you go, where the hell did that come from? Right. right. I know. I and, know. And it's like, God almighty. <laughs> you came up with more stuff I've yeah. never seen before. And he, he goes out to Wildwood, and he, he picked up some seven-string thing, and he starts, I mean, he was doing the heaviest riffs. And I'm going, this guy doesn't play these riffs? Where did <laughs> yeah. this come from? And he just right there. Yeah. 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 It's just amazing. You know, it, so man, it, that's it, pretty cool to be able to hang with him like you did. Yeah, and it was funny because I it was one of those things too where I was like a kid and I and in the beginning I barely knew what was happening and now you know years gone by it's like I have I, the best memory I have from Greg and like the that time was first off when he wasn't there I would play all his guitars in his basement <laughs> and I would like pick up everything and you know nice. and uh, he always had all this crazy stuff but I remember one day I went over there and the best thing. And the thing that probably like kept with me the longest was he would always like before we would play, he would be downstairs like playing to records and stuff. And when I mean playing uh -huh. to records, like he was playing the records like mm. that's one thing I don't think a lot of people know is like he can play like that cream stuff note for note. Like, oh, yeah. I remember one day I walked in and I swear to I swear it's the only time it's ever happened is where. Uh, Wheels of Fire was on, like the Spoonful, the live version. Mm -hmm. And Greg was downstairs playing it note for note. And I couldn't tell that he was, I thought it was just the record was so loud because it sounded <laughs> that wow. close. Wow. And I remember I walked Jesus. down and I saw he was playing to it and he stopped and it was so much quieter. And I was just like, you know, like it was one of those moments where I was just like, oh my God, like you just played that? <laughs> you know? You are like, what can him. you do? You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but uh, yeah, he's an absolute. <laughs> yeah, he's a monster, and he's a yeah. great guy. Oh my yeah. god! Yeah, he, he was so much fun to talk to. Uh, he kept yeah. us laughing the entire time. <laughs> and he's smarter <laughs> than like everyone I know combined. I think. Yeah, he's like just a super smart dude. Yeah, so, yeah, it seems that. You know. That brain of his, man. I'm telling you, <laughs> you know yeah. what is what is going on in there is. <laughs> and uh, last time I saw him, I was like, "Hey, Greg," because I just talked to him like oh. a, a normal guy. I said, "Do you think it's dumb I only play with a bridge pickup?" And he's like, hell no. I think it's awesome. I was like, are you sure? I said, because if I should ask anyone, maybe I should just ask you. I was like, do you think it's cheesy? <laughs> he's like, no. Just keep going. Just keep doing it. You know what I mean? Yeah. But like, man. I was just straight up. I was like, do you think this is dumb? And he's like, no. No, man. <laughs> you you're, know? You're, you're teaching guys how to get so much from so little. Yeah. I mean, which is way cool. Look, it, look you know, Leslie West made, it made an entire career, career with that. Tone, right. and, a, and a PA head for right. God's sakes he right. didn't even play through a real guitar amp he was playing <laughs> through a PA head and if that if that can be done right 
then what's to say that you can't pick that up and and just continue that on man i mean definitely and that's the thing too that i always think about like in a real way is like some of these guys too like leslie and you know paul kossoff and peter green and all these guys i feel like if especially with young guys like most guys they have no idea and it's weird to me because even 10 years ago i didn't know but now i feel like in a cheesy way like I have to keep pushing that forward because nobody else good. is going to do yeah. it, you know. Good, sure. Yeah. And, and I mean, I mean, even it, and it's in a, a good way, in a real way, because I love I mean, it. But even, you know, for me, like like Blackmore, you know, I yeah, mean, there was yeah. a, just a little little preamp before his marshals, but you know, that's just that's guitar and and fingers and volume and that, you know, well, multiple <laughs> pickups, of course, but you yeah. Know. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, it, it's it, we we always say it. I mean, we, ha- we there's like that handful of guys that when you hear the live recordings, you know, like Angus and 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 Richie and and, mm-hmm. and you just hear something and you're going, "What in the world?" Yeah, like Clapton, it just sounds know, like that thing's going to explode. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. You know what totally. I mean? Like it, like you do not want to be anywhere in front of that thing. That's where you set the amp <laughs> so with that on 10 on the guitar it sounds like it's exploding. Yeah. Anything before that, it's just magic. You know? Exactly. Oh, yeah, man. Yeah. It's so exactly, cool. Yeah. Man. And, and, and you know what? Yeah. It makes it makes incredible players, right? Yeah. So there totally. you go. And now here we are talking to you, brother. That's right. Well, dude. <laughs> so, I mean, Leslie already did it all in like before 71. So all I can do is keep it going. I'll just keep it. I'll just keep reminding everyone, you know, because it was already done. No. That's, but that's what I love. There's somebody keeping it going. That's yeah. So yeah, cool. Yeah, for sure. and, so cool. And you got a very cool style. And I, everybody, you just got to check them out because yeah. that right hand, you do, <laughs> I don't, what does your hand look like? Is it full of calluses? I mean, because. Yeah, you know what it looks like? It's like, sometimes on tour two, it's like, a, a, you know, like where you got like boxers tape their hands and stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I just tape them up. I don't use any nails. Everyone's like, dude, what do your nails look like? It's not no. the nails. Right. It's right. the actual you know the yeah, flesh it's like the and side it's the of flesh, your, yeah, yeah yeah and i and he does this real fast stuff and i'm like his fingers have just it meat has to be flying off <laughs> I, i'd be painting like new skin on every 15 <laughs> minutes you know i'll yeah, tell exactly. you what there is bloodshed quite often quite often <laughs> most Good. people are like how do you play like that and i'm like uh i just do and they're like no but seriously how do you play like that that must really hurt you know mm-hmm. yeah and, but, and the thing is is like yeah there's guys that play with their fingers but the right hand is kind of staying put, right? Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. you're doing that yeah. chicken picking thing, right? You yeah. see that. Then I watch you, and I'm <laughs> like, your hand is like Pete Townsend and just going nuts. Right. And I'm right. going, oh, this can't be. <laughs> this is either painful or, you know, but you can tell, man, you're totally into it. Now, and that's the yeah. refreshing part. Yeah, uh, I'm pop uh, committed, man. I am there pop you go. committed. <laughs> Cool. Uh, uh, strings, light gauge, heavy gauge? Yeah. Uh, honestly, it's usually an 11 oh, to wow. 52. Yeah, Holy. 11 to 52. Holy crap. Wow. Yeah. yeah. And it's yeah, not like a thing you're... about like trying to be like, you know, like, oh, I like Steve Ray Vaughan. It's just honestly, that's what feels comfortable. Um, okay. But <laughs> then again, I should say like after a few weeks on the road, sometimes I'll go down to like a 10 to 52. But I always like the thicker strings on the bottom, you know. Wow. Oh, I mean, uh, you know, I mean, you do have a very hard attack, and I would imagine that sometimes lighter strings would just, just come uh, off the nut, and <laughs> probably come off the nut, or or just you would hit them so far that that you know you'd lose you know the, the tune or intonation or something because yeah, his attack well, is like so hard. Yeah, well, like when we hard. toured with Zach, like I would play Zach's guitars, you know, like he would be like, "Oh yeah, play my guitars or whatever." I would break strings left and right on his because yeah. I think he played it was a ten gauge, but it had a lighter top, you know. Yeah, and um, yeah. it would go out of tune. I had wow. horrible tuning issues, and uh, I would snap strings. And he's like, "I never snap strings." And I was like, "Yeah, dude, but I pull like up. Yeah. You know, like I'm pulling <laughs> up on that shit." You guys don't play anywhere near the same. Yeah, it's not even crazy. close. You know, if Jared was a kung fu artist, he could pull your heart out with his hand. <laughs> That's right. It's funny you know? though because people are like, "Dude, Zach's like." People on the tour were like, "Zach's like the hardest player I've ever seen," and they're like, "But then you come out." And I was like, yeah, it's just a different thing. Yeah, yeah. It, it's different. Well, it's you're, totally you're different. grabbing the strings and just you're mercifully putting them in where you need. Right. Right? Totally, totally. Wow, wow man. Um, uh, speaking of seeing you play, where can our listeners see you play? Are you touring yes. right now? Okay. Yes. Uh, you're doing more so like 70 states. dates in a row in Europe? or what? 
<laughs> yeah, no, we're gonna do 97 shows all over the world. Uh, one show. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> we're playing. We're going on the road with UFO in Saxon. That's oh, happening nice. this That's month. That's too cool. Uh, we leave on the seventh. We're we're doing. It's a U.S. tour. Mm-hmm. So um, I always post the dates on my Instagram and Facebook and stuff. But we're gonna be all over the states for a month with them, and then we head straight over to Europe. We're actually doing a bunch of like big European festivals. We're gonna do. Uh, we're opening up like main stage for uh, a bunch of different stuff. Aerosmith, ZZ Top, uh, just all over Europe. We're doing that. You doing the do walking fest shows? You doing that walking fest oh. thing? The- yeah, we're doing that. And we're doing oh. Hellfest, and we're oh, doing. Jesus. Um, <laughs> yeah, man. We for, somehow. I mean, it's going to be pretty hilarious because we're opening up the main stage at Hellfest. And I'm gonna come out there, and these people are gonna be like, "What the hell's going on?" And I'm just gonna erupt. Nah, I don't. I don't think so, man. I think it'll probably go over well because Airborne has done that show, and that right. you know, that's like mm-hmm. a that's a different version of ACDC. And, and totally, it, it, it was accepted. And our buddy uh, Andy Andy Martin Jelly, I think, played that, mm. and mm-hmm. he's with uh, Artemis, which is like, oh yeah, heavy as shit. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, yeah, you should be fine. You should be good. Yeah, there was, they're they're a little, little more accepting. Over there too. Yeah, they're yeah. not. Yeah, it's a different crowd. Than Absolutely. Here. Yeah. Absolutely. Definitely. Yeah. So we're doing that, and then we're doing some dates. I just found out uh, with Extreme, and then Blue wow. Oyster Cult. We're doing some stuff, and then we're doing a whole bunch of headline stuff. Honestly, guys, the way I look at it is, I just want to be out touring. I want to be on the road. Sure. I want to be spreading it as far as I can and playing for as many different people as possible. You know, and getting it out there. And That's so I sweet. basically told. You know, my manager and my, my agent, I was just like, you know what? Let's just be on the road because, you know what? It's like when I came to L.A., it was like, now's the time. Let's go yeah. Let's go out there and just do it, you know? That's freaking great, man. It yeah. just seems like things really lined up for you, and I'm, I'm really yeah. happy for you. That and is it, cool. You know, especially because you're, you know, you're kind of putting the old school thing back out there again. Which yeah, is guys totally, are going to be man. great. I'm doing it for so him. great. And, and that's the way I feel about it, too, is it's like I'm just glad to be putting it out there because there's so many guys that are like, oh, yeah, I play blues rock and. I do this and I do that. I'm like, yeah, but yeah, <laughs> how, yeah, you know, no. yeah, you got 70 dB again. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. exactly. Hey, so you Let have me show you how I do it. You, you, <laughs> you have a website, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. And that will live with the episode in perpetuity when it goes into the archive. So you That's guys right. go out there, Always check there. it out, check all of his stuff, check out those YouTube. I'll put those YouTube videos of that cool, cool. Uh, Winnebago studio that you were in. Yeah, I did that. I almost Jamming died because I'm like yeah. almost I'm six and a half feet tall and that thing's like five <laughs> feet tall. So I was like, there's going to be you're, something broken here. Your, your, dr- <laughs> your drummer looked like wanted to be anywhere but there. Oh, God. Yeah, I put those guys. And that's the one thing a lot of people don't understand, too. I put those guys through hell and back. You know, they're like, where are we playing today? Oh, we're playing an arena. Oh, really? Oh, we're playing a Winnebago. They're like, what the <laughs> Are we going to well, drive the Winnebago live. onto the stage in the arena? That's well, kind of the prop. Well, there, so. Literally, yeah. the bass player looked like if he, if the drummer lost the stick, he was going to have would, it. Right. Yeah. He right was going to be the ear it. or eye or something. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it got real serious real quick. <laughs> oh, um, any uh, any releases out there? Anything current? Anything new coming up yeah, that you want to yeah, tell yeah. people about? We just, um, I just got out of the studio. We're, uh, we're doing a full-length record right now. Um, we're going to be releasing some singles while we're on the road here in the States. And we're putting out a full-length record here this summer. So I'm really pumped about it. And honestly, you know, I have uh, uh, my first record, Old Glory and the Wild Revival. That's been out. And I worked with Eddie Kramer on that. And I'm really proud of that record. But this next one, and I know everyone says it, but like this one, I really took it to that level of, you know, something a little above where I ever thought I'd take it. You know what I mean? Especially guitar playing. And, you know, we went... Instead of going, maybe I should turn this champ on like six and play. I, I, you know, I cranked it and I would just go crazy on this stuff. So I'm really excited about that, and that'll come out this summer. Now, when you nice. recorded, were you were you all in the same room, or did you track yeah. it? How did how did mm-hmm. it go? When we record, honestly, you know, I'd be cheating myself if I did it any other way. We did it old school, man. All That's in the same sweet. room, as little overdubs as possible. Um, a lot of the stuff, like when I worked with Eddie Kramer, we cut straight to tape and it wow. was like, it was insane because, you know, like I'd never done that. And he was like, this tape's expensive, you know? And he's like, yeah, I remember working with Hendrix, blah, blah, blah. And I'm just like, dude, you worked with Hendrix. Now you're with some idiot from Wisconsin, dude. Like, <laughs> how am I going to do this? You know? And, uh, hey, hey, so was, so was Les Paul. 
<laughs> exactly. So was Les Paul. <laughs> right. But yeah. So like little overdubs as possible. Um, you know, we I try and keep it really simple, man, because the biggest thing for me, especially now, is I want the live show. If someone buys a record, I, I basically want them to know that the live show is just going to be that record just even more intense, you know, and even more awesome. real. So cool. it's it's important to me to try and get that to translate through. Awesome. Yeah, man. That's great. That's great. Well, <sighs> Jared, yeah. unless unless you can think of anything else you want to tell our listeners, man, it's been great talking to you. Oh, dude, this is great. Thank you guys so much. Oh, yeah, no, man, it's, thank uh, you. Yeah, it, it's been fantastic, and I'm really... <laughs> I'm really happy that somebody's out there doing it old school again. Um, you said you're touring in the States for about a month or so. Any uh, yes. any uh, shows in the Northeast area at all? Yeah, we're doing, I'm trying to think. Well, Northeast, we're doing uh, two nights at BB King's okay. uh, in New York City. Mm -hmm. um, we're playing in Pennsylvania, uh, Penn's Peak. Penn's Peak. Penn's Peak. I, I, I don't don't I quote don't me, but I think we're doing the Ram's Head. Oh, well then, we're here. We well, are. Oh yeah, we're there. If we're you're there. Doing okay, so. dude. Okay, cool. We will be shaking your hand. Absolutely. <laughs> I'd Absolutely. love to meet you guys, man. Love to meet oh, you guys. Yeah. That'd be awesome. Cool. Hell yeah, man. Well, Jared, once again, thank you very much, man. Thanks for taking the time. Um, yes, hope you sir. had a good time. And absolutely, we'll let you know when this is up. And uh, I'm sure you want to share with all your fans because uh, I thought it was a great interview, man. I hope you. Oh, yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll be I'll be putting it out there, dude. Absolutely. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Jerry, thank you very much, man. Have a great rest of the evening and much continued success in everything you do, my friend. Guys, I will see you soon. Have a great day. Thank you, guys. And there you have the story. I knew that was going to be great. <laughs> yeah, it, he was a really great guy to talk to, man. And I'm, like, I, like I said, I'm, I'm just happy he's out there putting it out like it used to be done. Uh, yeah. You know, that's and, so cool. It's so cool. And, you know, I... We we talk about this all the time with the technology, and, you know, there's a lot of things. It's sort of like when you drive a car today, mm -hmm. the car stops now automatically. I guess eventually we'll just be in I the fetal position. I never want to try that, but, you know. Yeah, but, we'll, you know, eventually we'll be in the fetal position in the back seat. Oh, yeah. You know, on our... I'll be curled up reading a newspaper yeah, exactly. or a book or something, yeah. and they'll tell me when I've arrived. You know, you know you but know. there's something also about, uh, you know, and it doesn't have to be a muscle car, but just a car with a four-speed transmission that mm -hmm. you have to actually shift, and the brakes are a Become little, part of. Yeah. Become one with. Yeah. it. You know, those things, the lack of, I think, makes you a better player. Mm -hmm. you, you mean, know you mean the, the lack of technology the lack of the and technology and, you know. and the reliance on like gobs of gain and the signal being smashed and pushed through a line and god only knows what you're getting out the other end you know and it, it's so good that he's doing this and now if we could just get people to produce records the way they used to be produced <laughs> we were speaking of this before yes you know so you know i mean look even though they went to tape with him you know eddie kramer um like and I keep saying it, J.D. Simo, he says I treat Pro Tools like two-inch tape, mm -hmm. and I think that's a good thing. I think that's something that will probably get you more people listening to you instead of everything is per, it, it, because you know, a number one, it sounds different, and if people are into something new and unique and sounding different, that will catch their attention. But the other thing is, personally, I think that the old records because they they were able to retain the feel of people playing together and the dynamics yeah. and and the air and the ambience of everything yeah it kept your attention it didn't get old it didn't get boring it didn't get tiring it didn't get fatiguing yeah it, it, there was always something changing the, the, doesn't happen enough anymore yeah well you, you know, know we were talking off air about the brick wall yeah absolutely. everything gets compressed and then they limit it up as high as they can so the dynamics are pretty much they just Nothing go away changes and it becomes fatiguing as hell yeah yeah the our, our brains believe it or not kids are not designed for that no that's why you can sit there and listen to classical music for hours and you walk away and you almost feel a little refreshed right, because right. all the instruments uh, floated down a river at one point yeah, <laughs> and exactly. they were sawed up and made into these instruments. So, uh, you know, it, it's look, you may suck, but guess what? If you keep going at it, it'll You're start get better than the guys that don't. Exactly. It'll right. start to come around for you. That's right. You know, that's right. Man. 
Wow. Good on him, man. Good on him. Yeah, and he's a young guy too. Yeah, you know. Yeah, he's got he's got he's got his. The, the world is his oyster. <laughs> yeah, man. There you go. So until next time, my friend. That's right. Old school it is. <laughs> I'm Mick Marcelino. <laughs> I'm Jeff Bober. And we're always saying. Onward. Be sure and follow the show on Twitter, at Amps and Axis. Also, make sure you like the show on Facebook. For news, comments, and everything else, visit the webpage, ampsandaxiscast.com. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening.